more slope problems. Let's take a look at this one. It says, what is the slope? So I've been asked to find slope of the line containing the points 4, negative 5, and 4, 1. So again, I've been asked to find slope, and this time I've been given points. Now the easiest way to find slope when given points is to bust out the slope formula. If you take a look at your GED formula sheet, bottom third of it in the algebra section, you will see the slope formula. It says M, that's the letter we use for slope, is equal to Y2 minus Y1, the difference of the Y values, over X2 minus X1, the difference of the X values. So we look at the, the difference here, we're looking at the change of Ys, we often call it, then we're looking at the rise over the run. This is just a mathematical way to say rise over run. Okay, And then remember, we just have to pick a point to be point 1 and pick a point to be point 2. Again, it doesn't matter which one's which. Uh, nobody cares. As long as you're consistent, it won't matter. But a point consists of an x and a y value. So if you call this one point 1, then this will be our x1 and our y1. And then this point also is an x value and a y value. So this will be my x2 and my y2. And now we'll just plug in y2, or the second y, was 1, so I put 1 here, minus y1, or the first y, and that was negative 5. Now remember, I need this minus, because that one's from the formula, and I also need this negative 5, because that's a negative 5. One of the negative is not sufficient um, in this particular instance, because I need to account for this minus and this minus. And if you're not sure what to do with that, we'll deal with that in a second. Now my second x, my second x was 4, from the x from point 2. And from that I'm going to subtract, because the formula says to subtract, my first x, which was 4. Now, when you have two minuses, it means the same as the opposite of a negative, or the opposite of minusing. Uh, either way, because um, another way you can read a negative sign is opposite. But either way, it doesn't matter whether you think of it as the opposite of negative or the opposite of minus. Either way, the opposite of negative is positive. The opposite of minus is plus. And so we can see that that two negatives in a row just turn into a positive. And 1 plus 5 is 6. And 4 minus 4 down here is 0. Now, we have a problem. We have a denominator of 0. And students think because 0 divided by 6, or 0 over 6, another way to think about this, because remember, fraction bar means 0 divided by 6. Fraction bar means divide by. Okay, uh, Because that's always 0, students often think that this case will also be 0, 6 over 0. But no, this is a very different case. This is the case where I have like $6, and I want to divide it into piles of 0. If you think about this, you could divide all day long. You could... With your $6, you could make little piles of zero all day long. I mean, you'd be, it'd be like making imaginary sandcastles because there's nothing in a pile of zero. But no matter what you did, all day long making piles of zero, you would never get through your six things because you would never touch them if you're making groups of zero. And so it would be like um, you working forever with no purpose. So when we have a denominator of zero, we cannot divide by zero. You're expected to know that that is undefined. It is undefined. It is not, uh, there is no number that we use um, to represent six divided by zero or anything divided by zero. And so you're expected to know whenever you get a zero on the bottom of your fraction, it's undefined. And I'll just let you know, this applies to slope, but this also often appears in the first five problems of the GED. You're expected to know that whenever the uh, a fraction has a denominator of a zero, it's undefined. And so I've often seen that kind of stuff on the first five problems, and so you should know it for that as well.